What's up guys, Jordan Anderson here from Valley Films, and on this episode, we're diving into a little bit of data. So welcome everybody to the Valley Films video blog. There's sort of this uh, unsung hero out of the whole digital world nowadays, and that is data. Uh, okay, yeah, data, what, Jordan, who cares? That's like, come on, that's boring as shit. So data is very important. It's not the sexiest of topics, but I think we need to address it. Uh, as digital filmmakers, we are no longer film filmmakers. We are now digital filmmakers. So knowing data and knowing how it works and knowing proper procedure and etiquette for data wrangling can save your ass. Yeah, I'll say it. It can save your ass. Okay, is that enough to convince you that, to watch the rest of this video? Okay, good. Let's move on. First part of the data step is the memory cards. So your memory cards, that's obviously the first memory data storage device that goes from the lens magical through the sensor into the camera, into the memory card. Micro SDs, we have SD cards, we have CF cards, the Fast 2.0, Red Mags, all these sorts of data collection devices that fit into your camera. All right, so memory cards, they sort of depend on your camera. So like DSLRs, like the 70D here, uses an SD card. Uh, if you bump it up to like a 5D Mark III, you can do an SD card or a CFast card, which are much bigger. Flash, all right, I'm not getting into nerdy I'm not. I'm not doing that nerdy crap. You can go watch other videos for nerdy stuff. I just wanna talk about how to use these memory cards. Make sure you get as high a class as possible. Data's gotten a lot faster. Data rates have gotten a lot faster with 4K cameras coming out and they need these memory cards to be much faster. And there are some cameras that if you don't have the right memory card, then it won't even go into 4K. Like the Sony a7S, if you don't have that 64 gigabyte memory card, you're not even gonna get into 4K mode. Memory cards are cheap now. Data is getting cheaper by the day. So with memory cards, when you're on set, you wanna have, uh, I'd say as many as possible. Like there's nothing wrong with having too many memory cards. For example, if I go shoot a wedding, I'll bring 10 to 12 memory cards, you know, going into two different cameras, maybe double cameras. There's nothing wrong with having multiple SD cards floating around. I used to buy 32 gigabyte SD cards, which is a good starting point, and now I'm up to 64 gigabyte SD cards. The nice part about the 64 gigabyte, like I've recorded this vlog here on this SD card, uh, I think I have like five other vlogs still on this SD card, and I haven't had to wipe it yet, it hasn't gotten full. Get a large memory card, and you're like, you don't have to worry about it. You know, you get 128 gigabyte. SD card and your camera just roll all day go for it there is a dark side so you know the saying don't put all your eggs in one basket well if you have a large SD card and you don't have it on like multiple SD cards and that one SD card breaks or gets wet or disappears somehow then your whole project's gone like you don't have it on multiple cards you you're so that's why I haven't upgraded all my cards to 64 gigabytes. I've kept them at 32 because that sort of limits me and that forces me to swap out memory cards. Yeah, so spread out your data. Spread it out nice and even, like peanut butter. Next, so what I use is I have this waterproof case, rugged, got this on B&H Photo. This holds eight memory cards, this is very nice. Memory cards, nice and waterproof, nice and safe. So what do we do now? We got the SD card, we've finished the project. So now, uh, if you were on location, if you're on a film shoot, uh, that's when you need to hand all your memory cards over to the data wrangler. And from there, they will sit on their laptop. They will offload the memory from the SD cards onto the hard drive. So hard drives come in many shapes and forms. If you're on location, it's usually an external hard drive, not the Internal hard drives, the ones that look very computer techy. Usually externals range from like 500 gigabytes to one terabyte to two terabytes. Memory has gotten cheaper and cheaper. I will keep saying that the whole time. The first hard drive I ever bought, and I still use it today, is the My Passport. Can it get that focus? Can it get that focus? Yeah, I got this one for $89 off Amazon. And that was about two years ago, so I think right now it's going for much cheaper. I recommend it, it's one terabyte, nice uh, nice amount of data, it's pretty much all you need. You even come with like a little like $2 hard drive case from Amazon. If it fits in your budget, I would get a rugged or a waterproof external hard drive. The classic like orange lacy 
hard drives, those are great to have. So backing everything up to your hard drive, make sure you have a good filing system, stay organized. Let's talk about hard drives and memory storage when you're back at the editing suite. So the whole production's over, you brought all the external hard drives into the studio, now what do you do? Well, now probably the best time to do is to back up the backup. Ideally, you should have as many backups as possible. So this is when you're gonna actually put it on a computer hard drive. This is where like you can get to the big boy hard drives, uh, not just these little one terabyte pocket size hard drives. We're talking like pretty large hard, hard drives. Some use RAID systems, which are like multiple layers, uh, a lot of redundancy where it's like two drives. Like I said, I'm not doing that nerd I'm not talking about that shit. I'm just talking about data. We use the Aki, this is the hard drive enclosure. So in here is a four terabyte hard drive and it has expandable up to another four terabyte hard drives. Um, yeah, so this uses USB 3. I would recommend getting Thunderbolt nowadays. So I'll finish a project, I'll take the external hard drive and then I will put it on this thing right here. This rarely turns on, I, rarely, I don't even keep this turned on, plugged in, this stays like safely out of the way. I don't even keep it really connected to my computer. This is, this is my backup in case my computer crashes. This is completely off the grid, off the system. All right guys, let's talk about protection. If you were on location and you have external hard drives, get that focus. you are exposing yourself to the elements, water, dust, rain, sunshine, bugs. So I would recommend that you get one of these. This is their waterproof padded foam case. Brand is from Pelican. Uh, I recommend the Pelican ones because they're also waterproof and they're sort of air pressurized that, uh, the, you know, since these are like get suction tight that uh, they sort of save themselves. It's got padded foam in here and you put your hard drives in there and they are nice and safe. Finally, part of the data process, now that it's at home and everything's been redundant, blah, blah, blah. Well, I wanna talk about sort of like the future of data and where that's sort of going. Canon, Canon. Obviously the future of all data nowadays is cloud storage. Amazon, Google, uh, these are huge data server, massive giants, Dropbox. Uh, storing your data on the cloud is probably the way, it, actually no, it's not probably the way the future. It is the future, it is going to happen. Cloud storage is 100% how you would store all your data. Will all soon be internet-based memory, you know, local memory will be sort of a thing of the past. We got the unlimited Amazon cloud storage. So we've been backing up all our data onto the Amazon web services. I mean, even sort of think about it, like YouTube that you're watching this on is sort of cloud storage. I upload my videos here and you can download them back if you wanted to. I don't worry that much about the vlogs because I know they're on YouTube, so if I just ever wanted to download the video again, I just download it from YouTube. The beautiful part about cloud storage is that you store it on the cloud. It's triple backed up, a million times backed up all across the world. If you're in LA, you shoot a movie and then you go edit it in New York, you just still have all the data there and you don't have to worry about like lugging a bunch of hard drives safely to one place to another. I mean, if you really wanna go crazy, they now have the Amazon Snowball, 50 terabyte dustproof, shock proof. It's a highly secure, shippable storage appliance. The initial snowballs will be 50 terabytes for you to load data onto. Super hard drive, they will ship it out to your location and then you ship it back to Amazon and they'll download it to their cloud. If you were even shooting like a high-end movie and you had that mailed to you, you know, you have your data wrangler, put all the memory onto that snowball, ship it out to Amazon, and then now you have it cloud-based, you have it on your own hard drives. Filmmaking is gonna be a lot safer. The whole idea that memory is lost or hard drives are corrupted, it's gonna be a thing of the past. Final thing, a cool app to use when you're uh, doing a little data wrangling is the AJA data calculator. You can calculate things. That snowball, that 50 terabytes, that's about 502 hours of footage at 4K, red code eight to one. How else would I know that? You can figure out how many minutes you can get on your video camera depending on the model. I recommend that app, it's free. AJA data calculator. I'll put a link in the description if you wanna go and download it. Cool, all right. Hope I kept everything pretty clear. Didn't have to go too far into the nerdy stuff. I'm not really clear about what I just said. All right guys, so that's the end of the episode. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to subscribe, like, and share this video, and I'm starting to sound like a radio guy. 
All right, guys, so thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode, and be sure to subscribe and like this video, share it as much as you can. Oh, I will put a link to all of the hard drives that I use in the description below, and you can also check it out, uh, some of our computing gear that we use here on this website, valleyfilms.co slash gear. You can see all the gear that we use. If you have any questions, be sure to send it to me on Twitter or email me. Okay, yeah, you know how this goes. Yeah, we'll see you in the video. That's it. Bye. Stop watching. God. Canon. Canon, focus. Focus. Thank you.